Welcome to the Hunter Loves Voice Play podcast, Jeff edition. Um, probably going to think of maybe a better title for that, or, you know, I'll just start naming the episodes Jeff episodes. Um, so I did one last in October. I did Ghost Riders in the Sky, and you guys seem to actually like me doing uh, Jeff-related episodes. So I'm going to do both. I'm going to try to do both. I'm going to try to do voice play and I'm going to try to do Jeff. I didn't do one last month because I ran out of time. I left everything to the last minute. So I apologize for that. But since this song has been in my head for quite some time and also just just because the, the more of the story that I have behind it and why it has such huge meaning to me, um, I feel like I should talk about it. So I'm going to talk about Jeff's version of Shenandoah. And for you who don't know that, Shenandoah is a folk song. A very, very old one, might I add. And um, it's a beautiful song, no matter what rendition uh, you listen to. It's it's, it's very, very beautiful. Just the writing of it is gorgeous. Um, I was first kind of more known of it by Peter Hollins' version of... um, Shenandoah fell in love with it and of course who doesn't love Peter Hollins I mean come on the guy is a maniac I, like I don't know I think he's probably behind or past burnout at this point but you know he keeps on going and good for him but you know just don't want him to get sick because of it um oh, let me get into the story here and then I'll go into detail about the video so this one was a complete surprise from Jeff we as patrons, did not know that he was going to be doing this one, because there was, like, no sneak peek, there was no, like, actual real talk about it, um, it had just happened, I think he just kind of picked that one at random, or, you know, he, or maybe he did it for himself, I don't know, there was the Patreon release, while I'm watching it, because it was at the start of 2021, and it just, I think the patron release was like a week before that. So then I was probably in the very end of 2020. I can't even remember my years, you guys. Um, But, um, and uh, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to it. And I'm like, oh my God, he's playing piano. Because like he had hinted that he was going to be playing piano. But I was like, oh my God. And like, there was no like we had nothing like we had nothing to go off of it like he didn't tell us anything and there was nothing said and then once I read the title I'm like (gasps) like I almost felt like my heart had just stopped because I was like oh dear god and then I was like okay I'm like what is he gonna do once we get to the second verse with Shannon Doe I love your daughter I was an emotional mess because there had, I had been going through so much personal stuff at that point. And then just also realizing that it's like, this is my time to be cathartic. This is my time to let it all go because I've been holding on to it for so friggin' long. Um, uh, I was going through a painful breakup at the time. And then, you know, also I'm realizing like it's the end of the year and it was my first year, you know, being single, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, you know, and I was dealing with, with, like I was dealing with outbreak and, you know, all of that crap. And, uh, you know, like it was just like all of this stress and like, I'm, I'm not the best person when it comes to managing stress. Um, I will just let it fester inside of me until it explodes and you know people have 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 seen it have seen the very ugly side of of my stress when I get too stressed slurping my coffee before it gets cold I'm listening to it and I'm just I'm an emotional wreck and this was even before he got to the bridge and um, I'm just listening to this and like not only is the piano gorgeous 
gotta give him credit because the actual piano he was working on was shit. It was f flat as a board. It was so flat. Uh, he suffered greatly at our expense. Um, uh, the MIDI work was absolutely gorgeous on that one. Um, yeah, he, he did so well with this arrangement. And, uh, I was not expecting him to go into his higher range, which, you know, got me even more because, well, like, he starts out at, like, just this warm, resonant hum and, like, just builds into it and then, like, starts off just at his, you know, comfortable, comfortable singing range and then goes up into the higher register and I'm like, dude you're killing me over here. Like, I am slowly dying in such a good way. Like, it's like, if this, if I, God forbid, if I died tomorrow, this would be the song that I would want played at my funeral, you know? Or maybe at my wedding. Who knows? Because I don't think Shenandoah is, is like, is Shenandoah is like a funeral song particularly, but this version I would want played at my funeral. I'll allow you to play the karaoke track at my funeral. Like, good lord. You'd have to be a patron in order to get access to that, but <laughs> and just hit up Jeff and be like, um, one of your patrons died. Can we have it at their funeral? <laughs> oh, I, no, don't, don't put that guilt trip on him. Don't put that guilt trip on Jeff. Oh, he, he'd feel terrible. He'd feel so bad. I can see it already. Um, but yes, so I'm listening to this and once he gets to the bridge, he just pushes it and gives it that that vocal punch that um just brings it just a little bit more into that emotional feel and like you know he's not like way up in the highs he's kind of just more like uh, he's using a lot of his head voice like a lot of his head voice and um in this and, you know, like, it's like, I long to hear you for a... Like, you know, he's just very open. And um, I was not expecting that. And, uh, you know, like, you hear the cello swell and, you know, it just kind of goes like... Whoosh, like, it just trans like transitions into that bridge. And I'm like, oh, God, like, oh, shit, I'm dead. Like, it's just like, I, like, I can't do this. Like, it's like I'm two minutes in and this has like, or like three minutes or however long it is and I'm just like I can't like I I, I couldn't even watch the video because my eyes were just glazed over with tears and um I hit him up afterwards and I don't I, I think well I think he saw my comment on I think it was on YouTube I think is where he saw my comment or I just I, I hit him up on Patreon afterwards and um just telling him that it was helping me out for the good and help me be very cathartic with myself. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still very indebted to him and I'm, I'm kind of getting choked up about it because it just, uh, for him to release this and have such a beautiful, phenomenal job sent out into the world. And then just for me to re-listen to it and cry um, but also just to have that super cathartic moment of me crying and letting go of everything, you know, certain musicians have a special place in my heart because of that, because it's like, if they can take something and make it to where this is, this might sound terrible, but when I feel physical pain, but it's also an emotional release, um, it's just, it's amazing. And I, um, I, I started doing this, this thing. I haven't really done it. Like I haven't really put it out into the world yet because a lot of it, you know, has been very personal to me, but I've been calling it music therapy, the emotions within. And then I kind of just jotted down, uh, some of the notes that were very particular to me when it came to Shenandoah and what I was feeling at the moment. And like what I do feel throughout those songs. And like, I, I like, I've been trying to think of like whether I could do it for high and dry. Um, you, you know, just because some of those slower uh, melodic songs coming out of Jeff with his arrangements, it's just, you feel something and um, I can't necessarily place it, but I think 
this one had just opened up a door for something that I had been putting away for so long and something that I had been stifling inside for so long because it's like, you know, horrible analogy, but, you know, with the song Surface Pressure, it's like, it's it's pressure like a drip, 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 that'll never stop. And it's like, I'm always the one that's keeps that pressure in. And like, I, like, I will talk about it, but I, I gladly, I will not really feel happy with myself unless if like, unless if I'm actually, you know, going through it myself or it's like, you know, somebody just comes up to me and says, hey, are you okay? And then the next moment I will just break down. And I'm trying to kind of keep that a little bit easier on myself. Like I'm trying to take those five minutes of like, okay, I'm getting stressed out. I got to take a step back, take a deep breath in, let it out, and then just go on to the next thing, right? But um, in my line of work, that does not happen. You know, those five minutes, you have to make it for yourself because time is not going to, not going to stop for you. And um, I think as far as like on a more personal note with the breakup, um, I had just had a lot of questions and a lot of self-discovery about myself that, uh, you know, I, I had realized eventually that it was like, yes, it like I was, I had brought that breakup on myself, but also... Um, I was also realizing that it's like, yes, I am more, I'm extrovertedly introverted. So it's like, I will get energy from certain people, but they have to be the right people in order for me to kind of come out of my shell. If not, I will probably stay indoors, um, probably 99.9% .9 of the time. Or if I do go outside, it's going to be on my own terms. And it's like, I have to be alone. Unless if somebody asks me, you know, hey, do you want to go for a walk? And then I'll be like, yeah, sure. Again, certain specific group of people. Um, but yeah, with this one, I it was a lot of self-discovery. And with that song coming out when it did, and once it went public, I was like, y'all don't know what's coming and if you're crying with all of us, it's okay because it's like I have more than enough tissues to spare. Um, but yeah, I had told Jeff that like I just had to thank him profusely for this arrangement because he he had just really helped me out in a very in a, a very difficult time in my life, and he helped me to to let go. I don't know what the connection is with it. Like, I mean, I know he wasn't personally doing it, but he had helped me out so much with Shenandoah. And, um, oh, I'm getting teary, teary, uh, teary eyed here, guys. I'm, I'm sorry, but, um, but it's true. He had helped me out through a lot. And I had never felt such a physical and emotional release. Like, I had felt lighter on the physical side because there was just so much stress and so much pent-up emotion inside of me. And, and I'm, 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 I'm one of those people who repels it, who just, um, uh, you know, who just keeps it in. And, like, I will just let it grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Or that it's just, like, I will just, um... I'll just hold on to it. And um, I, I can't think of the word right now, but it... Um, repress. That's the one. Like, I will just repress it. Like, it's like, if somebody does me wrong, I'll be mad about it for like, you know, maybe 10 minutes. And then it's just like, you know what? You're in here now. Once this soul comes out of me, it's not going to be pretty. Because it's like, it's it has time to fester. And it has time to, you know, just hold on to all of the crap that has been done. Like, you know, it, it it's terrible because I, I really bring myself into a very sour way of a person when I do those things. And, you know, I've been trying to, um, to combat it somehow, but, you know, if you're going in, you know, 10, almost 10 years of repressed anger from childhood trauma, uh, you, you know, the older you get, you know, the more it is that you want to let go, but also it's, it's starting that journey of discovering, well, hey, like, what is it that I have to let go of? Um, I think I might post just my little spurble about, um, like, 
music therapy and the emotions within, you can cry. It's okay. You don't have to you don't have to hold it in all the time. But you know, sometimes I'm I'm terrible for it. I I will hold it back or I will cry on my own time, but then by the time that comes around, it's like the feeling's not there anymore and then I've already repressed it. So it's like gosh. But um yes. Shandoa. Out of all of Jeff's arrangements, I know like most of them have made me cry. Uh, Till Then made me cry. High and Dry made me cry. But Shenandoah did not make... Well, uh, Shenandoah made me cry the most cathartically and the most outpouring of tears that... I, I think I cried for like an hour straight after watching that because I was like, I, thank God that, you know, nobody else was here because I just... I was like, I am not going to be ready to face people after this because I'm like... It was just, it was just so gorgeous and it still is. And like, I, like it popped into my head, like right before I did this episode and I'm just like, oh, and the karaoke track, if you're a patron, oh, it's just, it's something else. The harmonies. Oh my God. Speaking of harmonies, that's another episode that I'll have to get around to, is the harmonies in um, Saddle Up. Nope, not Saddle Up. I lied. Um, Way Down. At the very end. Oh my god. <laughs> They're so pretty. Oh my goodness. Who knew that one man could harmonize so pr beautifully with himself? Is that right? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, Shenandoah by Jeff Castellucci. Check it out. People are sleeping on that one, which I'm very upset about. I mean, it's in the millions now, I think, or maybe not. I'm, I could be wrong. I haven't checked. Um, but yeah, people have been sleeping on it and it's like, come on guys. He plays piano. This guy suffered turmoil on piano, on a flat piano for three minutes to give us this beautiful creation of a video. So thank God for mute. Thank God, thank God that, you know, in the final process, you can just mute that out or you can just remove it entirely so you don't have to suffer through that. Ugh. If you ever release that version, yeesh, that'd be terrible. Really, really beautiful song. Beautiful set. Beautiful song. It's definitely one worth listening to over and over and over. And I think I'm going to end this before I start crying. And I, I think I'm just going to go and listen to it and cry. Because I feel indebted to myself to do so. So um, I'll post a link in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Go listen to it. It's just, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. He doesn't give himself enough credit for it, to be perfectly honest. He thanked me for it, but I'm like, dude, you're not giving yourself enough credit. It's just gorgeous. Okay, guys, enjoy this episode. Uh, send a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Listen to the other ones that I've been doing. Um, you know, it's all there. And um, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.